Um, we could do like some fun internet crazes like dabbing. What's dabbing? You just, you take your arm and you just, you just dab. Oh, I don't like that. That, that's, I don't like seeing you okay. do that. That's gross. Okay. Four percent on Rotten Tomatoes. My main thing is doing cartoon videos, but here came a live action movie that I just had to talk about since no one else is. 2011's Abduction, starring Taylor Lautner, rushed into production during Twilight Fever. Now sit down and let me hit you with the premise of this serious thriller movie that is in no way a comedy. Taylor plays Nathan, just an average kid researching child kidnappings for school. He visits a website that predicts what missing kids would look like today when Nathan finds this face on that website. Oh my god. But how is this possible? How could this brown boy not really be the son of his two white parents? Well, that's what I'm looking into. Let's find out why Abduction 2011 is the first so bad it's good movie. It's juice and jam time. Okay, so it's simple. You just, you take your arm and you just dab. Just dab, that's all you gotta do. It's just not my thing. Before I trash on it, this movie had potential. Director Joss Singleton has experience with action and so does Taylor Lautner. <laughs> But what little action there is, is just serviceable. What I do like is both Taylor and his character actually had martial arts training within the film, and they portray his character as limited, barely being able to take out one guy, while also sustaining damage. But there isn't that much action while the story... Oh god. I guess he needed to make room for his acting chops, which come off as more awkward than forgetting to bring condoms to a family reunion. Okay. Hi, Nathan. Oh, watch it. Watch it. Watch what? Considering the time frame, the Twilight movies were that massively successful franchise everyone either loved or hated, so they had to rush this out before the series ran dry. Abduction was put into production by Taylor Lautner's father with their production company, Taylor Made Productions, who've also made nothing. I wonder why, <laughs> but let's actually watch this movie. Taylor Lautner stars as Nathan. He's just your average kid no one understands. He likes to ride on top of speeding trucks to school, has tons of friends, gets invited to parties, rides a motorcycle, is loved by the teachers, lives in a nice house directly in front of his crush, and everything's going great. But you know what? He just doesn't feel like he fits in. Thank you. It's like the setup for Sonic X or My Dad the Rockstar, but Nathan's dad ain't a rock star. Nathan's dad ain't shit. Nathan's dad would call his own wife daddy. With so many first world problems, Nathan goes to therapy sessions with Sigourney Weaver, but even she can't salvage him or this movie. That's great, Nathan. The film picks up pace when Nathan gets assigned homework with a partner. It's the girl he has a crush on, played by Lily Collins from one of those hungry mortal divergent runner movies. In real life, Taylor Taylor Lautner and Lily Collins met on the set of this movie and dated, kind of like how he dated his co-star Marie uh, for the film Tracers, kind of like how Taylor Lautner met Taylor Swift and dated on the set of Valentine's Day, except Swift never wrote a revenge song about him. Hmm. Well, Nathan's back home just playing shitty video games when he forgets his crush is coming over for their homework assignment. Better hide those shitty games, Nathan. And look, he takes off a white shirt and puts on a black shirt. That's symbolism. Their homework assignment has them researching missing kids, and that's where they stumble onto a website that estimates what they look like today. <laughs> Ryan Seacrest mm -hmm. meets... Lady Gaga. Oh. <laughs> Next. Ha, those were popular stars at the time. Jason Statham meets Justin Bieber. <laughs> Seriously. It's so funny. These missing kids are probably dead and molested. So funny. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, and here's where the plot kicks off. Ooh, Matt Damon meets 
you. They find the photo of Taylor, but Taylor can't gaze upon the truth that his parents aren't his real parents. Look at it. Look at it. I want all of you to look at it. It's not true. That's impossible. Search your feelings. You know it to be true. No! So they contact the website to report that he himself is a missing kid. But get this, this entire website and the aging Photoshop software was made by a secret Russian terrorist group that was waiting for him and only him to make contact. Because who hasn't looked themselves up on a missing kid's website? Nathan hits the contact button to speak with the website admin, but what happens if someone else calls in for a different missing kid? I don't know, man. Nathan gives his address, but he notices the webcam turned on by itself. He then immediately forgets someone was spying on him in favor of investigating his own parents. Ms. Harper? We're investigators of the Bridgewater Juvenile Justice Department. You come in for a moment. Wait, 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 wait! Later that night, the evil organization comes looking for Nathan only for us to witness his parents as highly trained spies, but not trained well enough. They kill them and are about to execute Nathan's love interest until he comes to save her just in time, but the same can't be said for his parents. Who are you? Who are you? Answer me! Answer me! Answer me. You killed my parents! Stop. You killed my parents! Stop, stop. I'll tell you what you need to know. There's a bomb in the oven. Oh no, my lasagna's in the oven. A bomb in the lasagna? Great Scott. <laughs> but for reals, let's drop what we're doing and really check on that oven. Oh my god, he was serious! He put a bomb in the oven! Better run away from the explosion and into a pool! Oh yeah, they're fine. So, did that bad guy plan on dying with the bomb? Why'd he put so little time in the counter if he was still inside the house? Why plan on killing the parents or the girl when he could use them as hostages, ensuring Nathan will come back? No time to question that, as they run away on motorcycle, which didn't get blown up somehow, despite being left in the house. They're on their way to the hospital while the girl receives medical treatment. Nathan calls 911 and channels his best young Keanu Reeves. 911, what's your emergency? My parents were just murdered, and I think the people who did it are after me too. Please hold. Hold? What do you mean, hold? Whoa, you make a phone call and they put you on hold? What a concept. Oh, but now get this. The 911 operator was also waiting for him as she was really in the CIA. Or maybe that was a regular operator he called who transferred his call to the CIA. So is every 911 operator told, hey, if you recognize this kid's name, uh, transfer him to the CIA, please. Even Nathan's confused. You can visualize the geek in his head slowly ticking. Nathan, are you there? Are you okay? I'm shaking up a bit. But... Wait, how'd you know my name? Nothing gets by you, Nathan. Nathan ain't having none of this and walks away from the phone, but his therapist is also at the hospital and she knows things. I'm a friend of your father's. My father was just killed. I'm talking about your real father. Dun, 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 dun. At the same time, more of that evil organization are coming for him. Look at this bad guy. He takes off a white shirt and puts on a black one. That's symbolism. He also strokes his own suave hair graced by L'Oreal hair shampoo because he's worth it. I am now just realizing that's the guy from John Wick whose son stole John's car, so immediately all sense of danger is gone knowing John Wick's gonna off this guy. The bad guy searched for Nathan within the hospital, but Sigourney Weaver has a disguise. Balloons. That won't draw any suspicion. They drag along the balloons until they make it to the getaway car. I hate balloons. Oh no, my balloons! Yep, that was a one-liner that needed to be said by Sigourney Weaver. I hate aliens. Those balloons were so annoying. <laughs> and she actually, she added in the line where she throws the balloons up at the camera and says, I hate balloons because we all hated balloons by the end of that day. Driving 10 in a five mile per hour zone, they make their escape. 
Oh man, the bad guys are gonna get him. They're gonna run after the car and tell him to stop, but they're not gonna stop, no. Sigourney Info dumps them that she was working with his fake parents, because both his fake parents and real parents are spies. She also instructs them to not trust the CIA or those evil guys, but she doesn't state why they're after Nathan. That's all she's in the movie for and demands Nathan and the love interest who got dragged along to jump out the car as it moves while she lures everyone away. Take a breath. Josh! gonna be okay. Now! Get ready. <laughs> Josh! Love duo run off into the forest while Sigourney drives away to create a diversion. She explodes in the distance, or her car explodes? Why did it explode like that? No one had any explosive weapons, we didn't see anyone fire anything. Maybe that wasn't her, maybe that was just some kids who hit a gas line with their shovel. Who knows? That don't matter. They're on the lamb. The bad guys are after Taylor while the girl can leave any time, but she's willing to stay by his side. We have to stick together, Nathan. Who else are we gonna trust right now except for each other? Girl, you knew this guy for a week and he's already being hunted down by the Russians. It ain't worth it. Next inside Walt Disney, dust off your mouse ears for the Mickey Mouse Club. Then it's the musical comedy Pete's Dragon, right here on Disney. Taylor Lautner isn't a very good actor, but he does one of the best roundhouse kicks I've ever seen. It was a nice roundhouse kick. I did enjoy that. By now you're wondering, why are they after Nathan? I don't really know. A common criticism I agree with is the plot was poorly explained. You would think Nathan is some sort of Jason Bourne type who doesn't know he has all these skills, but no. From what I can gather, the Russians want him as a hostage to lure out his real father who's a spy. That's it. Also, at some point, Nathan stopped by a safe house to pick up a Nokia phone that contains the names of people who've traded info with countries they shouldn't have. Not sure why he took that phone, but I think that's the plot. So, their next step is to keep running endlessly and hope this blows over. They call up one of their friends, who they establish can make fake IDs overnight, apparently. Good quality. Life? Thanks, man. This is hot. Yeah, yeah, that's that's right. They then hitch a ride on the Amtrak train, which I'm very sure they enjoyed this bit of product placement. I want you all to know, I wrote this video script before any real-life Amtrak crashes happen, so keep that in mind. They'll be able to get on the train so long as security doesn't spot their fake ID, but according to this film, Amtrak security didn't even bother to ID them. I feel safer already, Amtrak. It's smooth sailing from here, but hold on. He's just standing there, menacingly! That is one pissed off chemistry teacher, but I don't think Amtrak security will let that guy on. While on the train, the two talk and start to make out. Oh there, this is PG-13. Okay, that's enough. Stop. That's enough. You can cut away now, oh god. I just want to say, an upload of this makeout session currently has over 35 million views. That is far more people who've even watched the trailer to this film. <laughs> Making out is thirsty work in more ways than one. Taylor and that girl go fetch some food from the Amtrak cafeteria. Girl makes it back to her seat alone when stranger danger happens. Oh my god, where is security on the Amtrak train? How did they let this happen? <laughs> Pretty fingers. <laughs> Tell me what room is it? This is disturbing. Far more disturbing than anything else in this film. I really want to ride the Amtrak after seeing this movie. That guy is looking for Nathan, so she lies about where he is. The maniac leaves the room, and maybe Nathan can sneak in to save his girl. Go 
Ready to attack! <laughs> He's acting all crazy! Run! Uh, hide behind that building! No! Hide behind that building! Oh, quick! Hide behind that street sign! No way! The maniac just went behind that sign! Quick! Get under the street light! The maniacs in the mailbox! The evil is defeated. To dispose of his corpse, they bust open a window and toss his ass like a salad. Wow. Ow. 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 Wait, play that again. <laughs> oh, that slick Rick dabbed to his death. Fuck that guy. Well, they're safe now, until they realize they're on the Amtrak. <laughs> Oh, false alarm, the train stopped to check on that body, and the two run off into the forest until they cross paths with the CIA. Oh crap, run! Climb into the tree, hold on tight, spider monkey! Nathan! Come on, why are you running? What do you think? If you're really the CIA, what's my real name? Nathan Price. Damn. They have lunch and agree to work together, but the Russians attack the diner. Nathan and the love interest escape and drive off alone again when Nathan receives a call from the Russians. Remember that Nokia phone Nathan had with all the trading secrets? Well, the Russians want it. And I guess they don't want him anymore, really, so why were they chasing him to begin with? I don't know. He just needs to hand over the phone or else. And when I'm finished, you'll be responsible for the death of every friend you have on Facebook. Oh, no, not all my friends on Facebook. Please, don't hurt them. Taylor agrees to the demands and meets up at PNC Baseball Park for their negotiation. They manage to get two tickets right next to each other the day before the Pirates game. While he agrees to hand over the phone, Nathan plans on killing that guy with a gun he taped under his own seat. How? How'd you sneak a revolver into the stadium? Where did you even get a revolver? Apparently, this movie takes place either in a pre-9-11 world, in the middle of Texas, or the John Wick verse because security doesn't care about people bringing guns aboard. You murdered my parents. They weren't your real parents. Now hold on, Nathan was about to kill him, but the Russian guy starts dishing on about Nathan's real mother. You killed her. Wasn't my intention. Martin was, as they call, class five. Why is this guy next to me talking about? Is he like some sort of Russian terrorist? Oh god, he is! Okay, just keep staring forward. Don't say anything. I was never here. Nathan has heard enough and reaches for his gun, but rut row shaggy. Is this what you're looking for? Hmm, well, ain't that a pickle. It must be Ramadan because he's gonna go fast! <laughs> Nathan has no idea where to go, but receives a phone call from someone unknown, instructing him to go out into the parking lot. But why should he do that? Trust me. Why should I? Because I'm here, son. They make it out of the stadium until the bad guy follows suit. This looks like the end for Nathan. Nathan, you're not as good as your father, Nathan. Oh, oh, I'm sorry Taylor isn't as good of a spy as his father who's got 20 plus years of experience over him. Sorry Taylor didn't come out of his mom's placenta jacking Chuck Norris karate kicks and fire dancing under waterfalls. I mean, we see Taylor train every day to be that good, but sorry he's not up to your standard overnight, douchebag. I'd say this is how it ends if it weren't for a sniper held by Nathan's father taking out the main villain. Our hero didn't even beat the bad guy. His daddy had to do it for him. 
week. He kisses his girlfriend. His dad calls him on the phone but goes into hiding again. Sigourney Weaver shows up. Why was she hiding? And the bad guy is dead. Oh, sweet, new shoes. I think what's gonna surprise people about Taylor in this movie is how good he is. What he does as an actor in this movie, you're able to see the growth of a new star that's gonna be around for a long time. <laughs> Abduction is awful, the story is so far-fetched, the action is mostly standard, and for Taylor Lautner's first leading role, well, let's just say abduction should have been called abortion. Seriously, the whole premise kicked off from a badly photoshopped image on a website. This premise would have been more believable had he found his real father on Jerry Springer. It'd be more believable if he asked a magic eight ball if these are his real parents. As bad as the movie is, Taylor Lautner's still working doing more comedy-based roles. But with Taylor being a star who knows how to fight and can do most of his own stunts, he deserved better than this movie. Well, at least we'll always have Shark Boy. We have a couple questions about your son Nathan. Shark, go down, run! We're going to find you. Not if I find you first. I won't let anything happen to you. You want to play with no rules? You better be careful what you let out the box. Taylor Lautner. Abduction. Ready PG-13 in theaters September 23rd.